Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. I've been slowly crafting a list of useful tips and tricks to share to all the players that are just getting started, as well as some of you veterans out there. This list is meant to help players better understand the mechanics of the game, while also learning a few things that they may not know. I'm sure I'm going to miss a few things that might seem obvious, so do your best to leave some feedback in the comments to help out everyone in this great community. So to start things off, let's talk about shared resources. I play a lot of public matches, and whenever I play with randoms there always comes a time where the team needs ammo. A really easy way to tell if anybody needs ammo is the coloration of everyone's ammo on the bottom left. Whenever you drop an ammo box, it's worth noting that there are only ever 4 pickups total. I'm currently running this game modded so I can always see how many charges are left. But to the common player on console, you don't have the luxury of knowing that. So it's really important not to double dip unless you're absolutely sure no one needs it. This can help your team in the long run, especially if a monstrosity awaits you further in the mission. Speaking of monstrosities, I'm sure you've run into your fair share by now. But have you ever had to fight a demon host because somebody accidentally aggroed it? I say by accident because the majority of the players don't ever trigger it on purpose. If you shine a light in its general direction, it'll wake up and start attacking. But did you know if you shoot around it, it will also wake up and aggro? I learned somewhat recently that demon hosts can be triggered just by shooting near them. It won't be immediate, but if you keep firing bullets around the aura, it'll eventually get angry and seek you out. So remember, lights off and stay quiet. Also, another small tip, if a monstrosity starts coming at you with a demon host close by, try to get some distance away from that demon host. All monstrosities have a tendency to toss everyone around, so having to fight an extra boss on top of the already pressing threat can just make matters worse. The Beast of Nurgle is another boss that you've probably come across in your time in Darktide. Hopefully you aren't falling victim to his nasty eating habits either. In my last build video, you would have seen me get gobbled up by this big slug, and that's because I was coated in his vomit. But did you know if you avoid his sludge altogether, he actually won't be able to eat you at all? This is why you see him have a midnight snack on the pox walkers around him sometimes. Sometimes they'll walk in his path and cross his gross liquids just to be eaten whole. This will actually regenerate some of his health each time too, so steer him clear of big hordes. And make sure you're always looking out for his very visible trail. If you see this indicator at the bottom of your screen, where all the other buffs are, this debuff will actually tell you that you're on the menu. If you happen to see a teammate get eaten, make it a priority to shoot his weak spot. Not only will this release your ally from his bowels, but this will save them from gaining a ton of corruption. Chaos Bones are a familiar monster if you've played Vermin's Hide before. This guy has a very interesting feature in that he likes to munch on your teammates. But he's kind of shy. See, a Chaos Spawn will only ever do that if no one is around them. So for this guy, you'll want to safely get close enough so you can refrain from gnawing on your friend's limbs. Another great tactic is using a charge, shout, taunt, or an explosive. This will not only release your teammate immediately, but it will also stagger the boss. So now, all of you can take revenge on him for bullying your Ogren. And speaking of Ogrens, let's talk about the final monstrosity you'll probably run into. The Plague Ogren. This guy will choose one person to charge into and remain aggressive with. You'll want to hold your block for defense and backpedal and dodge as he swipes towards you. He's extremely easy to stagger with nades, shouts, charges, and explosives. He's extremely similar to fighting a Chaos Spawn, just a bit more sluggish. But don't take that lightly though, as he can dish out a ton of damage, and his stomp can throw you aside with ease. Play to your strengths and defend when he's on top of you, and when your ally has aggro, go on the offensive. Every class can stunlock him quite easily, it just takes a lot of practice on reading his movements. Another thing I see new players do pretty often is leave the match after they die. I try to put myself in the mindset of somebody who does that because I never actually do. But it could be that they had a contract that required them to stay alive, or it could be that they got angry and don't want to play anymore. Just know that whenever you leave the game, you're not only hurting yourself, but you're hurting the players around you. You might not even care about that, but you should care about your time spent in the game. Since other contracts are affected by your match, you'll actually see no progression in them if you leave the game. This is something I see pretty often. But not only do you not receive any progression towards your contracts, but you also lose out on all those precious resource mats too. If you watch any of my build videos, you'll see me scouring the map for any resources that I can get my grubby little hands on. And that's just because I really want my resources. It helps everyone on the team, and I really like being a team player. This goes a long way for a player like me, but for contracts as well. So stick around in a match, even if you die, it doesn't really matter. This is all a team game and we're all just having fun. Even if you lose the match, you'll even walk away with some of the resources you earned, as well as some XP and dockets, so it's always worth staying. So since I talked about going down, let's talk about the health bars for a second. If you've been playing for a while, you'll notice the bracketed health bars. These are called wounds. Now, I know this is an obvious statement, but I feel like it's necessary to talk about. 
If you have any black within your health bar, it can be refilled by using a medical crate or even a health stim. You do not want to take a medicaid unless you absolutely need it. If someone on your team has any corrupted bars of health, they should take priority over anyone else. The purple bars that fill up in your wounds can only ever be cleared by a medicaid or a health stim. Now if you have a veteran with a passive ability called field improvisation, they can drop a med kit and clear out any corruption that hasn't taken over a wound. And the same goes for the zealot's aura ability, beacon of purity. All you have to do is stay close to them in coherency and you'll slowly have your corruption cleared. This is something I really don't care about whenever I'm playing pubs in a lower threat mission, but if I'm going into a damnation with special conditions and it starts to get really crazy, players will sometimes prioritize their 50 missing health over the guy who has one wound left and is currently fighting three maulers. Please remember that this is a team game. Share all the resources. That includes ammo, grenades, and stims too. Look out for everybody, and they should also do the same for you. Speaking of looking out, remember to tag everything. If you see ammo in the corner and you don't need it, tag it so your other teammates can pick it up. I notice a majority of the time when I'm playing with console players, they forget to tag everything. And I tag everything for everyone. Again, it can go a long way, but tagging items and resources around the map can help your teammates out tremendously, especially if something nasty is waiting around the corner. And this should go without saying, but tag specials and elites too. Not everyone has their attention on incoming threats, like a trapper or a hound, so be vigilant, and keep your ears open for the next sound cue. Another fun fact that I'd like to share about the trappers is that these guys will always rush in with a bomber or a flamer by their hip, and they usually work together to take out one of your allies. If your teammate manages to get captured, quickly rush to them and free them. The trapper will either reload his gun, or he'll start running away from you. This makes sure that your teammate doesn't die from any other specialist, and you both can fight the specialists together that are pushing in. This will save your team more time if they got downed, because freeing them is much quicker than having to revive them. Now, I want to talk quickly about dodging and optimizing your kill time. If you haven't already noticed the beeping noise in the backline that's getting louder and louder as it approaches, you might want to push that pox burster and dodge backwards to avoid any damage. Remember to only ever shoot these guys if you have no teammates in the near vicinity. Otherwise, you may cause them to take unnecessary damage, or worse, you can actually kill your teammates. The same can be said with pox hounds, except for these pups, you'll want to dodge to the left or the right and strike it as it passes. But if you have the chance to push it as it leaps towards you, you can stun lock it, leaving it open for an attack. This is a much more efficient way of killing them and requires you to only shove it forward and charge in for the attack. For crushers and maulers, you want to look out for their overhead attacks. They can always do a ton of damage, but these attacks specifically can incapacitate you in a single hit. These are easily countered by dodging to their sides, and these attacks can be blocked, but they will diminish a significant amount of your stamina, so it's best to dodge when you can. Now I know it might not be ideal for a lot of people that are playing, but if you're a PC player like me, you might want to rebind some of your keys. One I've really started to enjoy more is tagging with my block key, because it's also my ADS key. This can save you a ton of time on button pressing, especially if you're a veteran with focus target. This has made my life a lot easier since I'm usually shooting everything with that keystone on, but it also made my life a lot easier playing my other classes too. Whenever I block an attack from a rager pushing me, my teammates now know about him and can give me some assistance. Tagging is never frowned upon, in fact, it helps everyone on the team stay aware of your pressing threats, so tag often. Since I was talking about blocking, did you know that as long as you're defending yourself, you'll be protected from all angles whenever an enemy hits you with a melee attack? Your block will protect you in a full 360 degrees, so if you're getting swarmed, hold your block as you maneuver your way out. It'll save you a ton of health. Also, whenever you're going to revive an ally, make sure you have stamina. This will prevent you from taking any incoming melee hits, as you will block automatically as you pick them up. With that being said, if you have a teammate that can be revived, don't rush in like you're Rambo. Look at the situation and think about what your options are. Most times, if they're out there in the open getting sprayed, it's probably not a smart idea to jump in after them. Try to throw a couple nades and move in with a zealot that's able to use their relic. It's always better to have one down teammate rather than two. But to avoid this from happening, stay with your team. Now, I'm one to talk because I catch myself doing it all the time. I'm usually out there looking for resources on my own and then a dog comes by and takes a bite out of me. But when you stay with your team, you get and give a coherency bonus. Everyone has an aura ability that they reflect onto themselves and their teammates. Not only this, but the more people that are in coherency, the faster your toughness recharges. This can again go a long way, especially in some hectic fights with some harsher threat conditions. Of course though, space out if things get hairy, but never stray too far from someone. You will always be strongest when fighting in numbers, so try to solve every problem you face as a unit. 
And lastly, for the most part, the Dark Tide community is pretty great. But every so often you'll get somebody in your game who I consider a bad apple. And a really easy way to get rid of one of them is to block them. This way you'll never have to be matched up with them again unless you unblock them. I've seen my fair share of bad apples in this game, and sadly, every game I play has them. But Fat Shark has a pretty nice system in place so you can avoid these guys and purge all their heresy. All in all, I hope this helped you out a ton. And I know there are some basic things in here, but I see it pretty often enough to want to discuss it. So if you can think of anything else that might help somebody else out there, consider leaving it in the comments section. I'm sure there's something else out there that I didn't even know, so please feel free to post it there. I just want to say thank you so much for listening and watching. I'd really appreciate it if you left me a like on this video so more people like yourself can actually learn from it. The Dark Tide community is a pretty great one, and I think helping anyone out there that's willing to listen can go a really long way. Anyways, I got a few more contracts to finish out, but in case you forgot, my name is Zen, and I hope to see you again in the next one. Take care.